Hey there, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to be modeling a three tranche capital stack for a real estate development. Now this is a watch me build. And so in the spirit of our watch me build videos, I'll just record my screen. I'll do my best to talk through why I'm writing a given formula or to call out the keystrokes that I'm using as I model this. This is really for scenarios where I might be looking at a, a, a development deal and not just I and I have not just equity and construction debt, but some tranche of debt or debt like feature between my equity piece and my construction piece. And so that may be in the form of, of MES debt, it may be in the form of some secondary debt, it could be in the form of pref equity that really has a structure more akin to debt. Uh, nevertheless, the, the most of the concepts that you'll see here apply to a variety of situations. Now, I should also note that I do not build out my budget, and I use a fairly rudimentary way to solve for uh, construction interest. And in our accelerator, Michael, if you're an accelerator mem member, Michael teaches a, a variety of ways to handle that. And so I, I figured in this exercise, it's more about the waterfall of cash flows of draws between equity, the, the first in equity, the second in mezzanine debt, and the third in construction debt. So let's get started. What I've done here, and you can download this template and follow along, is I've already pre-formatted the template. You'll see that we have two sections, a uses of capital section, and then a sources of capital section. Within the uses, you'll notice a project cost before financing. And so in a typical model above that, you would have your hard costs, your soft costs, your land costs, uh, and then the detailed line items below each. Um, and then below our project costs, we'll be modeling carry costs for mezzanine and construction debt. But in your model, if you were to expand this, uh, you might have upfront, say, financing fees or any other carry fees that aren't specific to interest carry. But again, this is more about the sources of capital. And so as we look at the sources of capital, we have first equity. And so what we're saying is any requirement, uh, Cash requirement is first going to be borne by the equity until the equity has contributed a certain percentage. In this case, we, we are going to assume the equity will contribute 20, roughly 25% of the capital stack. Once that's happened, the MES piece will contribute an additional 10% of the capital stack. And then once that's happened, the construction debt will come behind and contribute the remaining 65%. Once I've modeled those three tranches of capital. I finish by summarizing the draws by each tranche and the total sources of capital. And the total sources of capital then must match my uses of capital. So uh, finally, along the left-hand side, I will summarize the totals for each and then look at the percentage of the totals by percentage of use versus percentage of sources. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sum up my totals here. So I'll sum my project cost before financing, and then I'll copy this formula down with a control C and then alt H V F. And you'll notice I've formatted this as accounting with no decimal places and then total project costs. I hit alt equal sign that sums up all values above there. So I have now my total for uses of capital. And next, I'm going to just highlight in yellow. Now I'm using the WST macros add-in, which gives me some additional keystrokes. And so here I use a control shift Y to turn those cells yellow. Um, also with them highlighted, I hit zero, control enter. And that sets all of those cells to zero just for now. And I do that just so I can visualize what will go in here at, at some point later. Then I come here to the bottom, I hit again, alt equals. Now when I hit alt equals, it also includes my header row, which these are a label that have an embedded um, label together with a numeric value. So Excel reads this month zero as a number, the number zero. And that's just a convention I use with all of my headers and that allows me to use the headers in, in any of my, my formula logic. 
That's not gonna be the case here, but unfortunately, when I, again, when I hit my Alt equals, it includes that. So I have to ensure that I just mouse, or I, uh, I key down, arrow down one, two, and then I hit Shift down arrow twice to sum those up. And then I do a Control C and then Alt H V F to paste as formulas only. So we have now uses of capital done. Let's move into our sources of capital. So the first piece of logic is how much in equity is going to be required. Well, it's approximately 25% and these values are going to shift. They'll be circular based on the interest charged, right? And because interest is charged on top of interest and the amount of interest is related to when certain capital is deployed, we're just going to, going to add for now fillers. So I'm going to here under the available column for equity go 0.25 and the plus is equivalent to an equal sign. And, and the reason I use a plus is I have a 10 key in my right hand and there's no equal sign in the 10 key. So I use a plus 0.25 multiplied by the 12,950. Uh, and you ask, why didn't I link it to here? If I do so, it would create a circular reference and this exercise is less about teaching you how to avoid that circular reference and more about modeling the, the sources of capital. So I have that. Then I also want to understand what percentage of the sources is this. I do uh, that divided by what will be the total in this cell here. Hit F4 on that. And then I can copy these down. So let's do this for available. Let's do this for construction debt. And then let's see, for mezzanine debt, let's change this formula to 0.1 for now, and then change the construction debt to 0.65, right? Uh, I can also add just a filler here for total sources, 1290, so that we at least can see this. And then I'm going to highlight our sources percentages. I hit Control Shift 5, and then control alt period and that adds a decimal place if you're using the wst macros so let's also do percentage of uses we take project cost before financing divide that by total project cost lock in the total project cost cell and then we can copy these down to about there and then do an alt equals to add those up okay so we have the available for, this is, the, when I say available, this is the amount of equity versus the amount of mezzanine debt versus the amount of construction debt that we'll be using. So the first step here now to model out our equity cash flows is to ask at the beginning of month zero, how much equity is available to draw from? So I just go equals the total, okay? And then each period after that, how much equity is available to draw from? Well, it's equal to the ending availability, which is this ending row, the ending availability. Hit enter there. Next, the question is how much in draw or how much of equity will we draw in this period? Well, it's equal to the minimum of total project costs, or however much of equity that's available to draw from. Close parentheses, hit enter. And so as expected, we draw not 3.237 million because there's only 3 million of requirements in this period. Therefore it draws 3 million. And how much is left to draw in the next period? Well, the initial availability minus however much was drawn and we get the ending availability, which in turn links to availability for the next period. Uh, we can then copy this over to period one. We can copy this over to period one. And then finally, what's the account balance? And this is less important for equity than it is for debt and construction that where we use this account balance to calculate interest. But it, I think it's interesting to track. So what is the account balance? It's however much has been drawn to date. So we go equals the sum of, and let's come up, and we're gonna choose the previous cell and then lock the column in place, but leave the row relative by going F4, one, two, 
three times such that the dollar sign appears immediately to the left of the column. And then we do a colon, close parentheses. Oop, I guess we have to redo the first. So let's come back here to the very first reference in this. We go one, two, three, H13 through, and it will be through the current period, which is I. Okay, and what happens now, because we left I13 completely relative, but we locked in the column of H13, as we copy to the right, the H13 will hold, hold steady, but the outside end of this range, right now it's I13, will expand as we copy to the right. So you'll see this, right, as we copy just over to month one, we hit F2, you're gonna see now that the range encompasses all draws as of the end of month one. Uh, let's go ahead then and copy the rest of these cells out to the right. Now you'll note that I've only assumed a 12 month period. Your scenario likely has many more months, but the concept only requires, I mean, it only requires a few months really to understand it, but I, I offered 12 in the watch me build. In yours, again, this formula, you would just simply copy out to the end of your analysis period. So what we see then is we draw through to month two. There are, there's 225,000 of requirements in month two but only 137,500 of equity available, and therefore we only draw a portion of what's required. And so that's where the mezzanine debt picks up. So let's come back and we're gonna use the exact same logic that we used with the equity to model our mezzanine debt. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna borrow these formulas. So I select all of them, Control C, I come right back down here, Control V, and I've borrowed them and then we'll make tweaks to them as we go. So the available row should be done. The draw though will require some tweaking. So uh, what is the draw for mezzanine? Well, it's equal to the minimum of whatever is available or comma total project cost minus any amount that's already been covered by equity close parentheses, hit enter. And as expected in, in month zero, there's no mezzanine drawn, but as we copy this out to the right, we're gonna see that month two, the mezzanine debt makes up for the deficiency in the equity, right? 225 required, equity covers 137.5, mezzanine covers up the, or covers the difference. And then starting in month three, and in month and portion a, a partial month four mezzanine debt funds. Now, when we hit month four, there's 1.425 million of requirements, but only 457,500 of mezzanine debt available to draw from. And so we then move to construction debt. The, uh, the account balance, by the way, uh, is working properly because we locked in the cells accordingly. Because we left basically the row relative, but we only locked in the column of, of the first left-hand side of our range, it automatically copied down. So we can now do the same thing here. Control C, come down here, Control V. Our available row is correct. It's just a matter of updating our draw row. So what is the draw here? You're probably already figuring it out, but it's the minimum of whatever's available or what's or the total project cost minus whatever has been drawn, which is the equity draw minus the debt draw. Close parentheses, as expected, nothing's drawn in period zero. As we copy out to the right, you'll see starting in month four, when there is now deficiency in the MES debt to cover the requirements, construction, begin, construction debt begins to draw, and it draws up all the way to the end. Now. We can do some air checks here. And how we do that is what we wanna ensure is that we have drawn all of our construction debt. And so I'm just gonna come right below our available assum uh, assumption, our input. I'm just gonna sum up all of our draws. And sure enough, those, uh, the sum of the draws equal the total available at the beginning, which is what we want. I'm gonna shrink that down and then I'm gonna paste this up above each of these, and that'll help us 
kind of eyeball this when we get into sizing our capital stack. And the sizing is is almost as much art as it is science. As I, Again, as I mentioned, if you're an Accelerator member, I'll point you to the lectures in, in your Accelerator courses where Michael teaches two methods for handling the iterative nature of construction debt. Um, but here we'll just, we'll use, we'll use some uh, art to size our capital stack. Uh, so finally, we need to calculate interest. Uh, we're going to assume, and I'll use out here, I don't know, uh, cell E22. We're going to assume a fixed rate on the MES debt of 8% annually. And then we'll assume 5% on the construction debt. Uh, so those are our interest rates. Now we're going to calculate interest. So we go equals the account balance as of the end of the previous period. Because again, remember, interest charge this month is, is on the ending balance of the previous month. And we multiply that by, open parentheses, the interest rate, and let's lock in just the column, F4, 1, 2, 3 times, divided by 12. Close parentheses. Now we copy that out to the right. We can then borrow that uh, row and come down here and just paste it for our construction debt. And we hit F2, and that way we confirm that it is calculating correctly. All right, same here, F2, great. So with that done, we can now link our mezzanine carry costs equals the interest for the MES, and then we can link the construction interest. Let's remove the white. Now another uh, option we have for filling this all the way out to the far right is rather than using a copy paste, or I generally do a copy and then paste as formulas, but in this case, I want to take this these values, both formatting and formula, and take them all the way out to the right. So what I do is I hit a control shift right arrow. And I haven't copied, I haven't done a control C. I've just simply selected a range. And then I hit control R. And what happens when you hit control R is Excel grabs whatever formatting and formulas that exist in the far left hand side of your range and fills it to the far right hand side of your range. And so again, that, that's it. That's a, a quick keyboard stroke to replace a control C, select the range, control V. So with that now, we have mes carry costs, construction carry costs. The last thing to do is to summarize our sources. So to do that, let's scroll down just a hair. And then equity is our equity draw. Mes debt is our mes draw. Construction debt is our construction draw. And then sources of capital, alt equal sign, the sum of those three. We copy those, and we can use our control R concept again if we'd like. And we have our capital stack. Now, is it correct yet? No, because the sum of these three values does not equal our uses or our total project costs. And that's because of the iterative nature of the carry costs. So we'll need, to, we'll need to handle that. So let's first understand how much equity versus MES versus construction debt we have. So we sum up our equity draws. We copy those down. Now I'd use an Alt HVF to copy just as formulas. And then I use an Alt equals to sum those up. Let me remove the highlighting with a Control Shift N and then let's again find out what percentage these are. Copy those down. Now what's the issue? Well, 12.95 is our sources. Our use is 13.217. So they don't match and they need to. Uh, to fix this, the first thing I'll do, I'll come back to my construction debt formula and I'm going to multiply this by approximately what our total uses are. Uh, one, three, two, one, seven, zero, zero, zero. Okay. And that is a pretty close approximation 
of where our uses will be. And then I'll come up here. I'm going to borrow this formula, alt H V F for the mes debt, and then change this to 0.1. Uh, now, again, you see, as we start increasing our mes debts and our construction debt sizes, that the uses increase. And so that's why I say it's iterative. Uh, I, in, in most of my models or something like this, I'll fix it by using a macro. And the macro will, there will be assumptions that the user enters for a percentage for mes debt, percentage for construction debt, the uh, equity being the result or, or the difference between those and 100%. And then the macro will loop through running uh, iterations to fix it. So that's one way to do it. Uh, uh, Michael introduced another way where you could use a solver. Um, there, you can also turn on iterative calc. I don't recommend that because uh, there's issues around precision uh, with, with iterative calc, plus it slows your work, workbook down. And so in most cases, just doing the process I'm about to show you, or I, or I am showing you, I found to be the easiest. So I first start by sizing my debt close to where I want it to be. And then I'm going to come and, and I'll delete this air check. And I'm going to use a side calculation just for reference. I go equals my total uses minus my mes debt minus my construction debt. And to get my total sources to be equal to my total uses, I need right now equity to be equal to this. So what I do is I do a control C and I copy cell F13. And then in cell F12, I do alt HVV. I'm pasting as values. And you'll see that these numbers now get closer. So I'll do that again, alt HVV. Do it again, alt HVV. Do it one more time, alt HVV and we're there. So now you'll note that these two values match. These two values match, and this is our air check, if you recall. This is our air check, and our total sources match our total uses. You'll also notice that our construction debt is approximately 65%, our MES debt is approximately 10%, and our equity approximately 25 cents. I say approximate because if we pull out a few more decimals, you'll note there it's not exact, but it's close enough. So that is my watch me build a three tranche capital stack for a real estate development. Let me know if you have any questions about anything in particular here. Other, otherwise, thanks for your time.